Hello, my name is Andreas Eklund. I'm a chiropractor and a researcher at Karolinska Institute in Stockholm, Sweden. This short video will be a summary of uh, one of our latest publications that have looked at chiropractic maintenance care. The title of the paper is The Nordic Maintenance Care Program Effectiveness of Chiropractic Maintenance Care versus Symptom Guided Treatment for Recurrent and Persistent Low Back Pain a pragmatic randomized control trial. This paper was published in PLOS One in September 2018. Persistent and recurrent low back pain is one of society's greatest challenges. Not only is it a, a large financial burden, but the suffering from individuals uh, is enormous. Strategies that uh, aims have aimed at secondary and tertiary prevention of low back pain are few. In fact, exercise and exercise combined with advice are the only interventions that, that have been shown to be effective to this point. Within the chiropractic profession, um, a procedure known as chiropractic maintenance care has been around, around for a long time. Um, among the Scandinavian countries, um, there's been a large effort, a research effort, to look at this procedure. Um, and from 2008 and onwards, a series of publications have looked at the um, indications, the frequency and the content and the clinical reasoning process behind the maintenance care procedure. This paper has made use of all the available evidence in the field, trying to mimic the clinical procedure as much as possible, um, making this a pragmatic trial. The aim of the trial was to investigate the effectiveness of chiropractic maintenance care in a population with recurrent and persistent low back pain. We wanted to look at the trajectories over time we also wanted to look at the total number of days summarized for the entire study period, to the total number of days with activity limiting low back pain, and the total number of visits to the chiropractor that the patients had. To do this, a randomized controlled trial was designed, and the trial started with an initial treatment period that would look very similar to what it would normally do in the clinic. At the end of the period when the patient had completed the initial phase, uh, where the, the chiropractor would normally recommend either maintenance care as a preventative measure or to tell the patient to come back if their pain came back. And in this case, we call that symptomatic treatment or, or it's a, a treatment when there is a symptomatic need. At this point, patients were randomized into two different treatment arms, either maintenance care or the symptomatic treatment group. The patients were then followed for 12 months and at the end of the follow-up, uh, they were given questionnaires to fill out as, uh, as a follow-up procedure. The primary outcome of the trial was number of days with bothersome low back pain or activity limiting pain. And this was collected using weekly measurements with SMS. Each week, a patient would receive an SMS asking how many days during the previous week had they been experiencing activity limiting low back pain. And they would then answer it between zero and seven. So for each patient, we, had, we have 52 measurements over the study period. We also collected a number of secondary outcomes um, with a baseline measure and a follow-up measure at the end. This graph shows us the pain trajectories for the entire 52-week period. The blue line represents the control group and the green line represents the maintenance care group. At the start of the trial, we can see that both groups continue to improve up until about week 19. From nine, week 19 and onwards, the groups stabilize, but the maintenance care um, have a, a generally lower level of pain for the rest of the study period. When the total number of days uh, with pain is summed up 
during the treatment period, the maintenance care group had about 13 fewer days compared to the control. The maintenance care group also had about two more visits during the 12 month period. So what can we conclude from this? Well, maintenance care may be considered effective if patients are selected according to the inclusion criteria used in this trial. Um, and that can, and they can, that can be summarized in three um, items or, or three in, in three indicators. Patients should have had recurrent pain episodes, so this should not be their first pain episode. They should also have had more than 30 days with pain over the last 12 months. During the initial treatment period, they should report a significant improvement by the fourth visit, making them a, a good candidate for, for chiropractic care. When we consider these findings um, from a larger perspective, also considering the other available evidence, um, we have to come to the conclusion that exercise should be the first line of treatment because that is where we have most of the supporting data. However, if patients uh, do not respond well enough uh, from exercise, then perhaps maintenance care can use, be used as a complement uh, to increase effectiveness and perhaps increase also the ability to perform exercise. Uh, also, if the patient is entirely unable to perform exercise, or perhaps when compliance is low for preferences or for other reasons, maintenance care should be considered an alternative. Um, what we found in our data was that there was a quite large variability among patients. Uh, and one factor that seems to be important is that the clinician monitors the individual progress of the patients because some patients will not benefit from the procedure and should, um, should be discontinued. So I would like to uh, uh, say a special thank you to all of those who have donated money to the Swedish Research Fund and ICON. Um, who has funded the project along with the Danish Research Fund. Also, I would like to say a special thank you to all the, to the clinicians who worked in the project management group and helped coordinate um, the data collection procedure. Um, Peter Lövgren, Jakob Petersen Klingberg, Matthias Jonsson and Christian Kalvert. Also, the 40 chiropractors who collected data in this project, they are the real heroes. And without them, this would not have happened. So I'm, I'm very thankful for your contribution to this project. I hope you have found this information useful and that you um, uh, um, perhaps share this with your colleagues if you think it's, it's, it's worth knowing. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me, um, email me, and I'll do my best to answer any questions you might have um, from about the study. So thank you very much for listening, and uh, have a good day. Bye-bye.